Hi guys, welcome back to our channel. If you are new here, we are a minimalist family who are living big with less. And today I'm gonna hit you up with one of my minimalist secret weapons. And it's something that I don't think it gets talked about anywhere near as much. And that is being a good gatekeeper and reducing the amount of stuff that we bring into our homes. I'm gonna hit you up with some of my best tips to make it happen. Okay, so every time I think about this, I cannot help but envision Gandalf standing there with his staff. You shall not pass. You shall not pass. Anyway, that was my really bad Gandalf impression, but I really want to get serious about some of my best tips for reducing the flow of things into your home. So we can declutter and reorganize our lives as much as we want, but until we stop the flow of stuff coming in that door, it's going to be an epically hard job for us. Once we re reduce the flow of the stuff coming in the door, that's when it gets heaps easier to keep things under control. I like to think of it a bit like if you have a leaky tap in your house, and of course you can keep bucketing that water out or keep cleaning it up but if you can stop the leak or reduce the flow that is actually going to solve your problem way faster than having to continuously clean up after the stuff comes in so here is my first tip for reducing the stuff that comes into your home and that is create a physical barrier that if stuff does not have to physically come home with you don't let it so I'm talking about really simple stuff. So maybe it's school paperwork. One of my subscribers, Kylie, says she fills out her school notes while she's at school doing the pickup and then gets rid of it. And I thought, that is brilliant. Then you're never having to touch it again. You know it's already done and you're reducing the amount of paperwork that comes in. I actually do this with our mail. Our mail box is downstairs where our bins are. So I quickly open the mail, even if I don't properly read it, if I'm just getting rid of junk mail, envelopes, that's all way less stuff that's coming into the house. It can also just be rubbish, like all that rubbish that we collect in our cars or the shoes that broke. If there's anything that you can just physically stop from coming in because you don't want it, do it. My second tip for you is to be proactive. So we already know we're gonna have Christmases, we're gonna have birthdays, we're gonna have those events where people want to give us gifts. And if you can give them a heads up at the start, I've talked about this heaps of times of advocating for the gift of experience. Another way you can say that if people really do love to give a physical gift, especially if you have kids, is to say maybe, hey guys, we're having a toy free year. We've already got enough toys. So if you could give us, you know, clothes or a craft activity or some sort of consumable, we're just, we're not accepting toys right now. Of course, if someone brings a toy, that's fine. But if you've restricted that flow to just be things that either don't earn an actual thing or that you can use up, then you're well on your way to reducing the amount of stuff that's coming in. Another time that you can be proactive is the end of the school year. I don't know about you, but my kids bring home all sorts of books and paperwork and art projects. And so I know that's coming. And so I prepare the kids, okay, when we bring that stuff home, we're going to fill up a folder of your favorite things from grade one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and put that in a folder and the rest we're going to recycle. So they're in the mind frame of, yes, I'm gonna keep my favorite things. And you're preparing them before the time comes so that we can restrict that flow of stuff that we're keeping in our homes. My third tip for you is assess before you buy. So often when I'm going to help people declutter their homes, they want to focus on the new piece of furniture or the new storage solution that they're going to need. And I'm always like, no, 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 no. Before we think, even think about bringing anything else in, we're gonna organize this cupboard, we're gonna declutter, and if, if we need something, then we can go out and grab it. But so often, when you really declutter the stuff, pieces of furniture, storage solutions that you've already bought end up being free because you've got less stuff and you can repurpose them somewhere else in your house. 
Another time that this can happen and be really useful is if you're thinking about home decor, especially with the changing seasons. Have a look at what you already have. Is there something that's been tucked away or in a bathroom that you can just bring out into your living room that you haven't really been enjoying as much as you'd like to? Rather than going out and buying something new, can you repurpose something that you've already got in your home? The same can also be done with clothes. My girls really love to do this. And and what we do is we just have a clothes try on day and we try out different outfits that we haven't considered, trying on some things that maybe we've held on to but haven't gotten enough use out of. Can I put tights with it and wear it in the winter? Can I put a shirt underneath? Can I cut this off a bit because although I don't like it as a maxi skirt, I would like it as a three quarter skirt. So assessing those things before you buy anything new will really help restrict the amount of stuff that you've got coming in. Along Along this same theme is if we need something, I just think about the things that we have in the house and if I have an opportunity to repurpose something I already have. I just did a grocery haul and I showed how I use old pasta jars to store leftover pieces of rice, baking goods, that sort of thing in my pantry. So this is another way I can reuse something I've already have. Not only am I saving money, but I'm reducing the amount of things that I'm purchasing new, and ultimately, this is what sustainability is all about. Reducing what we buy and reusing what we already have. My fourth tip for you comes around the idea of shopping. Now, I love a good deal. And so whilst I've always been a minimalist at heart, when things really get down to the crunch, I find it hard to say no to a good deal. So one of the steps I've taken for myself, even now, seven years into this minimalist journey, is to wait 24 hours before I purchase anything. And sometimes it's a big thing, like a new camera for vlogging or lights or a new tech piece for our home. And other times it's really small things like a new top or a new pair of pants. I kind of think that if I'm supposed to have it, that it will still be there the next day and that those shops are designed to make us impulse buy. And I can't tell you the amount of times that we've said no to something, we could have gone back and got it, but we've just realized, hey, we didn't really need it. We were just caught up in the spell of the store and wanting that good price, getting that great bargain, and ultimately you save 100% if you don't buy it. My fifth and final tip for you is particularly around children who like to bring things home. This is a question I've had quite a few times before, and that is get creative and give attention to those things without having to bring them home. So one of my daughters, who is the sweetest little thing, she loves to bring collections home. And I still want to honor her and honor the things that she loves. But for example, we live across the road from the beach and we go for walks on the beach a lot. And she would want to bring home shells or stones, soft stones from the beach every single time we went. And if I had allowed that, we would have just ended up with a whole heap of shells sitting there, not really serving any purpose. And so what we started doing is before we leave the beach, she still collects the beautiful shells. She still collects the stones and we leave a little pitcher or mandalay down on the beach for the crabs and she thinks this is a hoot and it's just about creatively giving honor to whatever that person is wanting to do with those things without ever actually bringing it home so whether it's when they show you something cool in the store, hey, let's snap a picture of that and see if you still want to put it on your birthday list. Or let's put that on an Amazon wish list for Christmas or a birthday, and then we can revisit it when the time comes. It's still giving honor to the person and the fact that that is a cool thing without actually bringing it home. I've said this before, but it's really something that's helpful with children. And that is when my kids say, I want or I need, I actually just repurposed that to be I like. Because when we like something, we don't automatically feel like we have to have it. But when we start using words like I want, that, that implies that we need to have that thing or we want to take it home with us. And so we can like things. I like all sorts of decor, which would not go in my home like with the theme or with the style that we've got here, but I can still appreciate them and I can appreciate them in others' homes without actually 
having to take them home with me. So maybe it's just that you create a photo album of things that you saw out while you were out shopping or you find a creative way to repurpose your kids' collections without actually bringing them home. Now guys, I know you guys are gonna have some great ideas for me and for those who read through the comments. So please chat with me down in the comments. I'd love to hear how you restrict the items that come into your home. If you're new here, we would absolutely love to have you subscribe. Here are some of our latest videos if you'd like to check them out. Please give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know that you like more videos like this and I will catch you all in the next one.